Well, hey again, everybody. This is Bob from Hot Rock Central. And uh, in case you're wondering about Hot Rock Central, that's my music channel. And uh, it's 99% rock music. And uh, uh, instead of starting another channel, I just uh, dump my Solar Project stuff on the same channel and just put it on a separate playlist. But uh, anyway, so uh, this is my latest project. It's my uh, new solar furnace for my shed. And it's about 16 feet long, about 40 inches high. Uh, it's built with uh, five quarter board for the frame, and the frame is, uh, as you can see, hopefully right there, it's notched out so the glass will slide into it and hold it in place. And uh, the duct work is uh, 3034 sewer pipe, four inch sewer pipe, and that one right there is the, <coughs> uh, the ingoing air going into the shed. And it's raised up here to the top of the cabinet so it catches the hottest heat and pushes it into the shed. And over here, I have a Y down the bottom there uh, with air coming out in two different directions so that it creates a little bit of turbulence in there and uh, hopefully avoids any standing heat pockets that might develop in there. And let's see, uh, this, this whole thing is supported on a on a two by six down there with uh, blocks underneath the uh, uh, five quarter board to keep it from sagging from the weight of the glass. So that should stay pretty, pretty good, uh, put pretty good and, and not go anywhere, I don't think. Now we'll go down here and show you the back side. And as you can probably see down there, there's a bunch of broken glass. I busted a paint putting this thing together. Fortunately, I have a, a, a whole bunch of these things in my in my storage unit that I got real cheap. Otherwise, uh, if I would have uh, had to buy this from a glass store, a uh, piece, of, piece of tempered glass to, that size would have cost about $150. So that would have sucked to have to eat that. And unfortunately, I've got to clean up this damn mess, and that's going to be a pain in the ass too. Uh, but anyways, uh, there's the ductwork there coming from the box into the shed. That's how that's run. And there's the other one right there for the incoming air into the shed. And as you can see, I've got, uh, I've got this whole thing mounted on four by fours. And uh, when I first uh, tested this thing out, I didn't have this backing that I've got on it now. It was just open, open back uh, from the front. And I was losing a lot of heat off the back uh, that I wasn't, wasn't going into the shed. So I took some house insulation uh, R16 stuck it back there and, and boarded it up and that helped quite a bit <clears throat> Now we'll go inside and show you how all this thing works And There's where it comes into the shed And that's the thermostat that senses the temperature in the box, and there's a 15 degree spread on it. It, uh, it uh, uh, cuts off at 115 degrees and turns back on at 135. And it just came back on, so uh, the temperature's dropping on it. And when it gets down to 115, it'll stop and, and uh, wait for it to heat back up again and then restart. And here's the outgoing air from the shed coming in from there and uh, hooked up to a, a inline bullet motor or bullet, bullet blower. A couple of bends there and strapped to the wall with the pipe going down pretty close to the floor because what, what you want to do is uh, you want to grab the colder air which is on the floor rather than uh, uh, if you had the motor up there and you're drawing the already hot air from the, from the uh, ceiling, uh, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. So you want to grab the coldest air by doing it like this. Now this is about to go off here, and I want to show you something, how quick this box heats up when it shuts down. It should shut down on the next change. There we go. All right. As you can see, it, it raises a, a degree about every second or two, so it, it heats up pretty fast. It doesn't take long 
for it to get back up to temperature and kick back in. So, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this thing came out. I'm uh, uh, impressed. My, uh, my other solar furnace for my cabin actually does a little bit better with, with the smaller space is because it's on an insulated wall and it's, and it's uh, circulating hotter air from, from a smaller shed. So uh, it does a better job than this because it's got, uh, uh, this one here has got a bigger space to heat. And uh, except for the insulation in the ceiling here, uh, the rest of it, uh, the walls and the floor and all that aren't insulated. So it gets cold in here pretty quick if it's not heated. Now, uh, when it, the first, yesterday when I first tried this out, it was a 50 degree day. And uh, um, I was keeping the, maintaining the shed temperature at 71 degrees just off the solar furnace. So that did pretty good. I haven't tried it out yet on a really cold day, like in the 30s or 40s to see what it do. But I would imagine that would probably, probably keep the shed somewhere in the 60s. And uh, uh, if I had to, uh, if I had to, I might, I might have to use one of my electric heaters here intermittently. But uh, other than that, uh, if it wasn't for that solar heater, I'd have one of these running right now. And uh, as you can see, there's the outside temperature today. That's the outside temperature right there. That's 60 degrees. And right there is the shed temperature. And that's, that's what the solar furnace is maintaining uh, all by itself. So um, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Uh, you know, the cost on this thing was about $400 in materials for the lumber, uh, the hardware, the insulation, uh, and other miscellaneous stuff, electrical and all that. Uh, that's not counting the glass. Now, like I said, I already had the glass on hand, and I, I, I got a good deal on uh, somebody disassembling a greenhouse and uh, uh, gave me a bunch, a bunch of tempered glass pieces for like 60 bucks, man. So I got all kinds of spares left if I bust another one. But anyways, uh, so that's it for uh, that's it for my uh, uh, solar solar furnace project, my newest one, anyways. And uh, the next one coming up is going to be. These lithium batteries that I just got in, these are uh, uh, two, 280 amp hour batteries. And the stupid company I bought it from sent me batteries that didn't have a, uh, didn't have threaded post on them. So I got to take these over to the machine shop and have, have some, have the post threaded so I can get this thing together and, and put it online. So that'll be the next project. And uh, I'll take you through that when that gets all finished. And uh, uh, thanks for watching everyone. And I will see you again soon.